Okay, guys, we're going to talk about the Song Dynasty in this screencast. What you guys can see in front of you is the map kind of showing the boundaries of the Song Dynasty. It's one of the first times you're going to notice that there are other things going on uh, in China at the time. The Jin Dynasty and the Zhejia Dynasty um, are also in existence. Song, though, is considered to be um, the real banner carriers of China. Take a look back in history. Here's the Han way back here, the Sui, and the Tang, and here we are, the blinking red, the Song Dynasty. So you can see how China has changed over time. The objectives we're looking at are roughly the same as last time. We're going to explain how the Song Dynasty created a powerful imperial state, describe the agriculture and commercial booms that created a prosperous economy in Song China, and identify the arts and technologies that arose in Song China. The ways that Song China gained strength as far as their imperial state were very similar to the way the Tang Dynasty did. They created a bureaucracy with many different departments and agencies run by the scholar officials. Remember that the scholar official is of course the person who took and passed the civil service exam. They had a strict law code and they used the exam system to make sure that they had the most educated and ethical men running the government. Early in the Chinese Empire under the Song Dynasty, around the year 1000, Chinese farmers began to plant a new kind of rice imported from Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is the area where you might find Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and other countries. Uh, this rice ripened faster, so they were able to produce more rice in a season and more rice overall throughout the year. The population of China quickly grew to around 100 million, which would be significant in the medieval age. Fewer people then would need to work as farmers. We of course remember the old principle of labor specialization. There's extra food. Not everyone needs to be involved in the creation of food. More people could then work in a particular trade. The Song Dynasty used the civil service exam system from all previous dynasties, except they really made a couple different improvements. They expanded it meaning that it covered more subjects, so it wasn't just ethics and uh, Confucian ideals, but would actually cover things that the scholar officials would likely come across in their tenure as a government employee. And because of that, many more people took the exam, many more people passed the exam, and many more people got government jobs. Most officials, though, still continue to come from rich families with political influence. That education to prepare yourself for the test was quite expensive, so it was somewhat prohibitive to the peasants. The economic success that started under the Tang Dynasty continued under the Song and actually even became better. Um, and because of this, there was far more trade. And of course, the medium you would originally use in trade would be coins. Um, so there's a lot more trade, meaning there's a lot more use of coins. The problem being, of course, that coins can get very heavy, particularly when you have uh, large amounts of them. The solution for that was to print paper money, promissory notes, or bank notes. Um, this would be the first government to create paper money. Other organizations had done it. Some banks had issued bank notes, but Song China was the first to issue bank notes from the government, pieces of paper that held value just like a coin. Obviously a lot easier to carry and a lot easier to do business in. Song China was so successful that many of the cities grew to enormous size for the medieval period. Um, a lot of people became merchants, and merchants wanted to live in cities. That's actually something you guys are going to want to remember moving forward, especially when we talk about Europe. Um, other people took up private trades, opened businesses for themselves. By the Song period, the beginning of the Song period, China had a few cities, plural, where the population had reached or crested one million people. That was a lot of human beings. Obviously, we talked about large cities in the Middle East, um, but these cities in China would be very, very big. The, by comparison, the largest city in Europe at the time, Paris, had about 150,000 people. That's almost, that's, that is 15% of one of the Chinese cities, which is pretty interesting to think about. Song China was very successful, um, but it would give way to an invasion from the north, and we'll pick that story up on Monday when we get back. Have a great weekend.